Hello everyone, my name is Sham and welcome to Bitrix Kitchen. Alright, so let's start our video by creating the REST API that runs the machine learning solutions. Uh, I've been asked already to have some graphics and animation on my videos because it was kind of not clear what I'm doing. I actually did some graphics but it was a bit difficult for me to do it in the edit again because my machine didn't help me because I was recording in 4K and really my machine was dying in, the <laughs> in that time. But yeah, now we're going to share our screen for creating the REST API. So right now I'm in front of my workstation which will be the server side and later when we jump to the client side which is like the workstation from the artist I will do it on my laptop. So for now, let's just create a new project in Visual Studio and choose ASP.NET Core Web Application. As you can see, it runs on Windows, Linux, Mac, OS, and Web. So this shouldn't be a problem for anybody who's using different operating system. Um, next, um, let's just have it on the desktop. I'll call it FFX Fiction. And let's call the solution ML backend and create. We should be asked about what type of project it is. Yeah, so it's an API. We have no authentication, we have configure for HTTPS, it's .NET Core. Um, I think we will have an issue a little bit with the SSL certificate, but it doesn't matter, it's not a big deal for now, but later if you're going to do authentication and make rules and claims for the users of the API, you have to define this certificate. But for now we are fine. So that's how it looks like. Let's just switch here, oh, let's just switch here to machine learning backend. And that's how it looks like. So if you're not familiar with C Sharp, don't worry, it's not going to be a hard code, uh, hard code programming. Um, so that's it basically. We are making HTTP requests, just like when you are opening any website. So let's just run a solution and let me show you what I mean with this. Um, hmm. So that's for example, imagine that you are um, asking Google, like just writing down google.com and that's the result you get. You get value one and value two. In Google, case you're getting like bigger dictionary with what elements to show and what text to show and the size and all the stuff so here is the result that we saw right now um at that part get by id it's not correct because um that's a different thing um but to test it for now we can change it with string actually we can do it uh oops sorry string and let's call it uh, value name and we are returning not just value but let's start creating a constructor first values control and the values controller we always have a list of string called our values for example and in the values controller, we are defining our values to be a new list of string. And it includes value one, apples, uh, kitchen, for example. And when we are requesting all the data that we have using the get request or like the normal request we are returning our values and if we are searching by id let's call it by the value name and here we are going to do a small for loop we can say for each var uh, element in our values just wait for our value. And, um, uh, okay, then we see if a uh, value that equals oops, equals to value name, 
then we are returning value and I would like to add and the equal that uh, string comparison dot yeah and now we are ready if the value is not existing at all we just like return value does not exist let's run again So that's the big request that we have, that's returning all the elements that we have. And if I'm just looking for apples, I will get apples. If I'm looking for something that doesn't exist, I will get value doesn't exist. And we also have kitchen, I think. Uh, down, oops. Kitchen, we get kitchen. Um, this one should not be like this, of course. It's more, it should be like a model. You have an object and this object have an ID and you're always comparing the IDs to return the whole object. But that's just to be able to make it to work, like just to show the example itself. Um, and here are the post, put and delete. Um, I, I would recommend to have a look over the REST API. Just write down RESTful API and you will get uh, there's a Wikipedia, yeah, here, wiki page. I honestly prefer that you read it because it gives you more um, insight about what's actually risk API. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, so here the get, the post and put, and batch and delete. So basically, we're using get to ask for data, post for sending um, new data. If you want to create, for example, a new user who some someone registered and you want to add him to the database. You're using a post request. Put is more or less for replacing, like you're updating someone's information and delete is delete. If you're also familiar with the with the um, uh, pattern crude, like create, wait, crude? Yeah, create, read, update, and delete. Yeah, <laughs> it's actually the same. That's the same if you say like uh, post, get, put, delete. It's the same. Okay, so now let's see how can we start playing around with this. First, we can create our own controller right now. So add a new controller, let's call it, um, yeah, API controller with the right actions. And this is gonna be the super resolution controller. Okay. All right, so at the super resolution controller, we don't need to have a get requests. We are not asking for any, we don't need any get requests. We will only need to post and that's all what we need. Because in that case, we are only giving an image data to the back end that can process it and then give us the result. So here we can do it in that case. I think I don't need this one also. I need this get. So that's the post. Um, from body, uh, REST API have a header and have a body. So in case you are wondering, um, so we are sending um, a model or an object from the image that we are actually going to process. And for that, we have to create our own, our own models. And the models, basically, if you're using Python, it's like an object, it's a class. Um, let's create a new class. And this class is going to be um, super image. So super image will have public name, not name says name, get set, and I'm sorry, string. Uh, and it will have a uh, base 64 information. Sorry, my mistake. Yeah. All right, so in that case, we can also give it an ID, but we do need actual ID in that case. So the input here that we are going to give to our back end is a, a super image. And then we are calling it image. All right. And here, we'll do all the machine learning stuff and 
with the result and super what am, what the, what's wrong with my English super image uh, object so that's what we're going to have as a result so we are not just having a void function it's going to be a super image as a result so we can just add for now you can return the image again so whenever you get in you get out doesn't matter all right so i would i would keep the virus control for now i don't care about it but we can go for um, the properties the large settings and instead of always opening at the values I would like to go for the super resolution but we might we might get an error here because we don't have um, a get request so for now we'll just have some sets like a sample get in here I'm not going to use it but I'll just keep it for now and it should return a new list of string and this list of string have a b and that's enough okay um so now i think our back end is it's ready to implement stuff into it uh, let's get the machine learning solution and for that i let me introduce you to 3deep 3deep is actually my website i used to create some free tools and plugins during my free time and posting it for free so you can find like a virtual camera for Maya using AR core on your phone um, there's a style transfer for Photoshop there's a, the super resolution also for Photoshop so let's just get the Photoshop super resolution get into the repository um, okay, I, I, I would recommend you to follow the, the, the requirements here to install, to make it to work on your machine. I have done it already on my machine. And just get the solution. And we are going to clean it up a little bit so we can make it to work um, directly in our backend. So that's the backend. Um, okay, let's do. some folder for this I would like just to copy this inside extract here okay and preset script super resolution so that's all what you need for the super resolution that's the same folder we don't need it I, I created this one actually because I was using Photoshop for it and we don't need send to Photoshop so all what you need is the training model we have we need to get also the tensorflow model the configuration some utilities and that's actually the code here uh, let's have sublime let's open it here let's read it so we take an input as an image path we super resolution it and it's automatically saved in the output images here and where's the send to photoshop i don't want to have it anymore and there's a function for the cleaning up the temp because now we don't have temp anymore this was all for photoshop i don't need to print out how long did it take for now i don't care about it i just want to have uh, the output file name so in the end of the function i prefer to return the output image name file name and here we can say the output image equals this and just print it out for me all right so in that case we are going to try it that's why i had my photo on the desktop <laughs> um, yeah we can just do it here i prefer to have code lines this here so now we are in the folder, we have to write down Python, super res, and then my photo. Zack. Oh, nice. So if you ever had this issue with TensorFlow before, like the CUDA, CUDA status, 
internal error. Let me introduce you to the fix. Wow. Um, here you need to add uh, one more thing here, which is a GPU uh, options, and it's actually a dictionary. Inside it, we have allow growth, and it's true. Right? And now let's do it again. I don't like PowerShell actually, but anyways, CMD, CMD, this, this. And here we go again. We run Python, super resolution, and then my photo. Let's see again. Alrighty, that's cool. So now we have our output image is in output images and that uh, weird name. And that's the super resolution image. Um, okay, so now let's implement this one into C sharp. And what we're going to do is basically having it here. Let's now we have our controllers. Um, where did we put the super image? I um, actually have to create a model folder for this, so just be more organized. We call it models and we add the super resolution into models. Yeah. And we will get an error here because this one does not exist in the context. Does it? As you like. I'm sure it doesn't exist. <laughs> and let's create now a folder for the for Python. That's one, Python. And we are going to have this super res folder into Python. I would like to do this one. So here we have the super resolution. That's my image. And yeah, that's the Python file. All right. Next step, make sure that we have Python in the uh, path environment variable. So to make sure that you have this, if you open the command line and you write Python, what's wrong? Oh, I just want to see the, the keyboard, that's why I'm doing a lot of mistakes, because this mic is blocking me. Uh, if you write Python, you should see this. So if it's in the environment variable, then you are fine. Um, next step. Now inside Python file, I would like to create a new class. It should not actually be a class, it should be just... Um, well, let's call it a class. And let's create um, solution, solutions. Yeah. It's a solution file. And inside this, we will create a function for making the images super resolution. So inside this, we should get uh, a string as a result first it's a public function public static function returning a string and let's call it super resolution takes an input image pass and we will decide later what we are going to have from the front end because it should not be an image pass it should be um, super image image okay and this also should be static and let's return the, um, actually we should return a new a new image object also so a super resolution image should be a return also here and that will explain now what's going to happen when we um, in the controllers in the super resolution control here we will have solutions dot super resolution image all right and control dot to import the missing library the return from this one is a, a super image like you can see here so we are going to return the super image and to be more nice <laughs> We can just create a new super, ah, super image, um, upscale image, like this, and we return this upscale image. 
so we move this one up and we are returning this one so as you can see here when we are um, requesting uh, the back end we are sending also an object that includes the image and image name and the image page 64 um, so we are passing this object to the super resolution function which we will be working on right now and this super resolution function in the solution <laughs> module I think the naming is really really uh, messy but um, just because I'm, I'm not I'm not uh, scripting this video I'm sure okay now we have the super resolution so we get an input as an image and now let's check uh, the model again for now I will work with the image path I will work with the image path and I don't know why I'm writing in this way because I'm, I'm more and more into the pip ed Python coding style uh, so I don't care about them for now I don't care about base 64 but later we have to implement these two um, so just to make it running for now the path should be the image path that we have all right so inside solutions we have the image here so to make it clear um, what we are doing here at the command line is that we are running python then the python file and then my image class and we have to replicate the same here so that's why i ask you to make sure that you have python in your environment variables right now we need to get um the python from the environment variable nope we don't care about this but we have to get uh, the super resolution.py file from our module which is in here and to do this i would like to do uh, var super resolution file equals um path combine of course we need to import this module control dot to import it in and out and inside here we get the environment current directory and then python that's basically like you are doing forward slash and then the path and then we have um, super res and then it this super res file all right so that's the super res file from our current directory we go for super resolution for python super resolution and then the file is here um, and then we need to get the image pass and the image pass is basically from image pass equals image dot image pass that's what we have here so now we have the first one first argument the second argument and now we have to create the process that we're going to run so we create process and we have to import it process um, let's call it, let's call it um, solution execution wow sounds cute equals new process and I'm just trying to put this one here so start info then redirect std output equals true yep and we need this one again to file name equals python which is like the first um, argument we have and the arguments we have here equals string format wait zero one and then we add super is file super is file and image pass okay okay um next thing is to 
start execution and output execution output equals to solution execution standard output dot read to end okay um now we are ready actually now we are giving an image and it's getting to process inside here and why i'm having the execution output because in the solution here i'm printing out the image path in the end when i'm done that's what i return so the next step will be converting it into page 64 and sending it to the front end and do all the stuff but for now we can test this um, it should work, I'm sure about this. Um, we can actually try to make a hard-coded stuff for now for evaluating. So let's get this image path. I would call it like this. And if it worked, we should have a new image here. Let's click this one and let's open it in Explorer. Okay, so when do we um, execute this image? We have to give an input as the superposition image. Um, in that case, we don't have... Um, what's called? Something like... Uh, a front end to this with so we can use something like swaggers or we can use postman but for now I think I'm over 30 minutes of the video so I prefer to have um, just to test it to make sure that it's working so I prefer to go here and just run it in the get the normal get and super new super image doesn't matter so if it worked, it should return a super image, which we don't care. We would care, like we will check that our result is working when we have a file here, okay? And this one will run once we open the link of the controller itself. So solutions, we are getting this image running here and making sure that it's like working. Let's check it out. So once it's loaded the page, there should be a file created here. And you will see the back end actually is running the Python in the back. Yeah, it should take more time. Yeah, you can see here that the Python is exec execu executed already. And, yep, loading is done. It's cool. It's normal. Nice. So you can see here we got the image. That means that our solution is working. Next step will be that we will do the post production, uh, post production, sorry, <laughs> the post, uh, request by passing a new image object and this new image object will include the part that we actually hard coded in here all right so that's it for the video today i think it was too much information too much stuff in one in one video and i didn't actually explain a lot of stuff i'm just doing it so please if you have any question just write me in the comment section and i will answer it i'm sorry if i it took me a long time to explain it but next video we will be doing the front end we will make the post request with an image that we are loading uh, we will do some PyQt stuff like a front end GUI so you load an image and then you are submitting it to the back end the back end process it and will send you back the result that the front end again will show it you can save it for example and yeah so I hope the next video will not be as long as this one so I hope you have a blessing day and see you next time bye bye Shoot you at the house. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, 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 oh.